Asian American family. I feel like I was cheated by the television programs that show parents <laughs> hugging their children and rattling off the line never heard in a Chinese family, I love you. The family immigrated, my family immigrated to the United States in 1977 and my fourth brother and I were born as US citizens soon after. My parents and three older brothers brought with them a few suitcases and a whole set of dreams to feel their unknown journey in a new world. My mother carried a picture of Guan Yin, Goddess of Mercy, which was hung on the wall and blessed our home throughout my childhood years. She knew it was going to be difficult, but I don't think she was ready for everything that she and my father had to endure with my four older brothers. Nonetheless, my parents pushed through and pulled, put all five of us through school. When I was in elementary school, I learned that if your parents made you cupcakes, you were loved. I thought love was having a packed sandwich, like the ones that I saw other kids have in their lunch boxes, and the hugs and kisses that they got on their foreheads before the bell. I learned that if Santa came to bring you presents on Christmas, you were loved. I didn't know that love came unconditionally without price tags and without gaudy showcase gestures at that age. But now it's different. I know what it is. Love, to me, is the strength and wisdom my parents gave me. Love is a shared messages of support and care. It's a purposeful joke to provide comfort. It is sometimes wrapped in something second generation Chinese American girls couldn't decipher at first glance. In essence, I can guarantee that the package is so much more worthy than a sweet treat or a mass produced toy. I was told that as a Chinese American, you have to work twice the efforts of another person. You have to work harder so you can get to the same level of prestige and impact. They believed me. They expected my success because they worked by hope, not by money. I faithfully believe I am loved in so many ways. I'm sure they would say so too. Besides, who is to argue with a professor and a lawyer? I'd rather kind of open it up to questions, um, either about that or other things. Um, and you guys kind of heard a little bit about my background um, and what I do. Uh, I do a lot of um, guest speaking, kind of like a speaking engagements like this. But I do it primarily also with um, young people like you guys, but also with old fogies like me and other people who are older than I am. And so it's really fun. Um, but the one thing that um, I, I do want to kind of leave you with is to ask yourself what motivates you, what kind of drives you to be leaders. What drives me is the fact that I came from a background that was not necessarily always peachy keen and nice and you know filled with fluffy things like the things that we talked about earlier in, in the book. But um, but it's those things that my parents gave me, my my brothers gave me that support, that nurture, and that's kind of what really fuels me. Because anytime I think, you know, I'm so tired, I don't want to study anymore, or I'll go and do some whatever event and people are giving me a lot of crap, and I still think to myself, you know, life is pretty okay. And as much as I strive to the highest potential of what I can, at least now I can turn 